Okay, we're going to start, and I hope we have the web camera working so you can see us. Welcome, everybody. We've got a few more people showing up in the auditorium today. I think we're over 20 already, and people are trickling in. And I've seen quite a few online. I, I didn't check right away, and I hope you can hear me. I'm Valerie Yance. I'm one of the organizers of the training. I'm going to do the uh, introduction and then introduce our speaker today. Our topic is Blue Zone Approaches, Lessons Learned from the World's Longest Living and Active People. Here is the opening uh, sl slide. If you are having trouble getting in, just use this link and uh, re-register. And if you need to do auto, audio, there's the phone numbers. Uh, we are a member of the Western Region Public Health Training Center, and we are in Region 9, so we work with California, Nevada, Arizona, and the Pacific Islands. And our sponsors and partners today, I work with the Hawaii Public Health Training Hui. I'm the chair at this point, and I am employed by the University of Hawaii at the Office of Public Health Studies, and then as I said, we're part of the Western Region Public Health Training Center, and all of the regional health training centers are part of the Public Health Learning Network nationally. And we do not want to forget our wonderful hosts here, uh, Queens Medical Center, who helps host physically and the audio, so we can do the webinar through their wonderful AV. Sean has been on duty for Many, many months he always helps us, but there's quite a team of AV people here. This, sh uh, this slide shows you my, my picture, and then Camille Cristobal, most of you know her by email, but she is the can-do person that can make any connection, get you any certificate or whatever you need, and Christopher Hill, who really helps us behind the scenes. He had been doing the resource center, uh, so, uh, resource sheets, and helps us with the CHES. And then uh, we were very lucky today, we obtained all five continuing eds for the social workers, for the certified substance uh, abuse counselors, for the certified health education specialists. Um, we have it for the registered dietitians and the registered nurses. So we're very happy and I think we have a little bit of everything in this auditorium. I've already talked to some of you. Uh, with your uh, professional background. These are the linking competencies coming out of uh, data source. So you're going to find out about Blue Zone and the amazing study that they did to determine uh, the information that will be shared today. Uh, also, the data dataing from uh, program planning and then the scientific or evidence based data that is happening uh, with the great work they're doing. And then we get our nursing continue ed through the University of Arizona College of Nursing, which is one of our partners in the Western region. And they ask that we put the learning objectives on their slide. So you see that they are going to discuss the blue zone regions. I've heard this uh, discussion before and was quite captivated by it. And uh, then they are going to summarize the nine best practices and share some amazing uh, success stories about that. And there are no uh, financial disclosures uh, for the training to the, for the trainer. For those in nursing, uh, you will have to go to the University of Arizona College of Nursing at this website to get your continuing ed after you fill out our evaluation form. And when you go there, their website looks like this. And it is a link over here in the side column that you will look for that. Um, for those in Chez, you will have, we have started the new series for the year. You will have to go to this link and take that survey or you will not get your name submitted to the Chez. And when you go there, uh, take that link this is what the uh, website or the survey looks like. Sorry, there are special duties. And then this is the gen general request for continuing ed. Uh, most of you will be emailed by Camille. She 
goes through each one of you and emails your certificate. So for the social work, CSAC, um, and dietitians, you will get it on the uh, certificate that she emails to her. If you have any questions, you should at, you do need to give us about 10 days. It takes us a while to get everything collected and she goes in and does it one time. So it takes about 10 days from today. So you need to give her this weekend and next weekend. And if you don't get it by the middle of, by the end of the month, then you can contact us if, for follow-up. Uh, we do record this and the bottom link is the Zoom, I, I'm, I'm sorry, the YouTube link where they're all posted. Well, I think we're up to more than 15 or 20 uh, trainings there and please enjoy anything that's there. Uh, for you, most of you, uh, Camille sent you a link uh, in our file drop at UH that has all the handouts for those here in the auditorium. The one that we ask that you give back is the blue one. Would you please fill it out and leave it before you um, leave? It's an evaluation and we do tally these and they are very useful to our funders. Uh, the green one is the training that's coming up next month. It's very exciting uh, with Native Hawaiian updates. And then we have gotten started the yellow one. A lot of people have been asking. I have the first six with Camille's help. We have the first six trainings of this year open. We are still collecting the information from all the trainers in the last six, so we can't open the website until we have the information to populate the, the registration site. That should be done by the end of this month. So when I'm here next month, you'll have the, first, the full set, but you can go ahead and register for the first six. I know a lot of you like to register all at once and come if you can. And you know if you're registered, you get the PowerPoint. Even if you don't show up, we feel like you can learn through the PowerPoint or have that information. So we are very relaxed about that. You should consider registering. And now on with the specifics of today. Hey, aloha, ma, mali, 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 uh, McCummer is our speaker. And I feel very fortunate. I have had a couple of conversations with her and she's here today. She's, her title is called Engagement Lead as her job with Blue Zones. And she is a wonderful local gal from Na Nanakuli and a graduate of Kamehameha High School. And then she went to the University of Hawaii at West Oahu and got a double major, a bachelor's in humanities as well as Hawaiian Pacific Studies. And when she was at the University of Hawaii, West Oahu, she was very active there and you can see her roles. And then I found out how she ended up with Blue Zones. She worked uh, a couple years with HMSA and she was in the program that evolved into this Blue Zone uh, program, the Share Care. And she's gonna tell you more about that. So when uh, the Blue Zone got adopted by HMSA, they asked if anybody would like to apply and she applied so we feel very fortunate so she's been working with blue zones and hmsa uh, transition for three years and we feel very fortunate to have her here today and i want to invite her up and have her start presenting on the blue zone projects here in hawaii So if you press this on, I get one. Oh. Aloha, Mike Oh, we can try that one again. Aloha, Mike Aloha. My name, as Valerie shared, is Kiola Malia McCumber, and I'm just so privileged and excited to be here with you folks today. The irony in my Friday is that earlier this morning at six o'clock, I actually presented to the Queen's Medical Center West Oahu employer group, and they're one of our work sites. So also a special mahalo to the Queen's Medical Center and their continued support across all sectors and areas for sustaining a healthier Hawaii. And my purpose and goal here today is to share with you information about the Blue Zones project and some questions I want you to think about while I'm sharing this information. And I hope that I answer for you today are one, where are Blue Zones and what defines them as such? Secondly, what is the Blue Zones project and how are we serving our communities here in Hawaii? 
And lastly, how can you, all of you sitting here and online and abroad, become active and participate with us to sustain health and well-being? So you see on the slide here, there are five geographic locations identified. The first, Loma Linda, California, La Coya, Costa Rica, Sardinia, Italy, Ikaria, Greece, and Okinawa, Japan. Dan Butner, who is a National Geographic Research Fellow, was tasked to research areas in the world where people lived the longest. And these regions were defined or identified as Blue Zones regions because their population had centenarians or people that lived to the age of 100 at a rate 10 times higher than that of the United States. And he got to have fun and explore the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you on his journey to three of the regions specifically to share some of his findings. So our first Huaca'i or journey stop is Sardinia, Italy, an island approximately 125 miles off of the coast of Italy. And you'll notice in this picture that there is a highland or mountainous landscape there. Typically, their population consists of shepherds, and due to their kuleano or responsibilities, a majority of the day, they're walking or moving naturally. Um, some of the key points to their longevity in Sardinia being that they're having constant low-intensity workouts or impacts over a longer period of time. And I was really impressed by this kind of your man because I go to Lenny Kai Pillbox, for example. I got a hat, sunglasses, shoes, water bottle. And he's high up there and he just, he looks no sweat, standing nicely. So hopefully if we continue that, we can be like that one day. So I kind of want you to go ahead and think about to yourself, just some of or thought, five different ways you could move more naturally throughout your day, whether it's stretching periodically, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking farther. I know many, too many people don't really prefer that, but you're getting extra steps in biking to nearby places, or walking instead of driving, and doing activities that encourage natural movement. Also in Sardinia, Italy, they typically eat a plant-based diet. As you see in this picture, this kupuna or elderly man is harvesting crops from his garden, so it's definitely a farm-to-table concept where they're growing their own food, there's food sustainability, and in Sardinia, Italy, they also have a red wine that has the highest level of antioxidants compared to any other wine in the world. And in Sardinia, they also have what is termed as social aged equity, where as people mature in age, they're revered as repositories of wisdom. And I think that's something we can definitely relate to here in Hawaii, as we have the concept of malama kupuna, or respecting and caring for our, our elders. Color mice are impressing the right instead of the left. And so that was Sardinia, Italy. And now we're going to go ahead and travel to Okinawa, Japan. And I think a lot of people um, are pretty knowledgeable in terms of their health and well being there. But here's some profile statistics they have the longest disability free life expectancy in the world. They live seven good years longer than that of the average US citizen. And by good years, we mean that they're not suffering from as many chronic diseases. They're not heavily medicated or dialysis, for instance. So as they age, they're still independent. There are five times as many centenarians. They experience only one-fifth the rate of breast and colon cancer and one-sixth the rate of cardiovascular disease. And the reason we definitely highlight the last two statistics pointed out here is because 80% of U.S. citizens over the age of 60 are likely to suffer or even die from one of those two. So what are some longevity secrets that they practice in Okinawa? One practice is that they're very conscious of what they eat and how much they eat. In Okinawa, Dan Buhner observed that prior to partaking in a meal, they would have a eating affirmation that they would say out loud which is hara hachi bu. So I'm going to say it and have you repeat after me. Hara hachi bu. Waikai, great job. You learned a different language and words today. And essentially that eating affirmation, hara hachi bu, reminds them to only eat up until they're 80% full. 
So even for us in our um, everyday, I see a lot of you eating actually. Okay, say it, no. <laughs> but the point in that is that they're conscious again and mindful about what they're eating and how much, not overindulging. And in Okinawa, it was also observed that they have moai. So we can say it together, moai. And I really consider, I think of those as huis or groups of people. And it's very org organic in Okinawa where parents will create a moai with other children born around the same period of time. So in this picture, this particular moai has been together for 97 years. And the average age amongst the kupuna here is 101 years old. And as you can see, there's no walking canes, no wheelchairs, they're sitting and talking. I was wondering, the one on the right kind of looks mad, but I said, hey, when you're that age, you probably have a lot to talk about. And some of the secrets shared there is that a moai provides a sense of personal support for you. You're surrounded by, quote unquote, a right tribe of people people that are there for you physically, that support positive well-being within your life, and having strong relationships. The Framingham study really demonstrated that isolation is detrimental. You know, as humankind, we're meant to interact and socialize with others. In that study, 10 years ago, the average American had three quote-unquote good friends. I don't know what you would define as a good friend. And now, in this present time, the average American only has one and a half good friends. So think of your two best friends and only know one is real, the other one is half real. But in essence, again, this is just demonstrating for us that OMOI supports longevity and a positive support group for you. So in knowing that having a right tribe is key to longevity and success, try to even reflect now or identify people who support you positively and maybe what types of impacts or how they influence you. And then consider yourself as well. Are you a good friend to others? How do you influence and interact with the people around you? And now we are going to Loma Linda, California. And this was the only region identified as a blue zones area within the United States. And Loma Linda was recognized as a Blue Zones region, and it primarily consists of Seventh-day Adventists. There was a longitudinal study done by the National Institute of Health. It surveyed 101 Adventists in Loma Linda, California, over a 30-year time span. And in that, they derived this information demonstrating for that the average American woman, the age span was 80 years old compared to an Adventist in that area, which was 89. And then for men, the average age 76 compared to a Seventh-day Adventist, which was 87. And I guess maybe the main point in this study was that Loma Linda is literally right outside of the Los Angeles area in California. So why, when they're in the same almost physical and geographic environment, is this population outliving that of their counterparts? And one of the practices observed there, for Seventh-day Adventists, their Sabbath actually begins Friday evening to Saturday evening. So immediately from that time period, they, I would say, maybe they separate that time and really dedicate it, truly dedicate it to their family. It's a time planned every week where they're spending a great amount of time together, decompressing, downshifting, for maybe whatever their work or school week was. In this picture, you can see a family hiking together. So in knowing that spending quality time with others, try to think of activities that you enjoy doing with your family and maybe how you can do them more. And just know that by continuing to do these activities, you can add up to six healthy years to your life. And in this picture, we have Dr. Ellsworth Wareham. In this picture, he was 97 years old. He is a member of the Seventh-day Adventist community in Loma Linda, California. And he wanted to build a fence one day for his property. And he contacted a few vendors and they quoted him about $6,000. And he said, even at the age of 97, hey, I got it, I can do it myself, I'm healthy. And he built that beautiful fence right there. And today, he actually is 107 years old. 
he's still alive. He's also on Facebook. Go ahead, follow, like him, Dr. Ellsworth Warham. I follow him myself. He posts information and he's um, very familiar with the Blue Zones Project as well about healthy topics or articles and research related to longevity. And although he retired as a surgeon in his 70s, he still assists open heart surgeons and practitioners at his local hospital. So he has a very strong sense of purpose and that was observed every day, not only upon retirement, does he find his work and his responsibilities fulfilling, but he lives according to his purpose. And those were three regions that we just covered with examples from each about quote unquote, their secrets to longevity or different factors that contribute to their longevity. Dan Buettner did go ahead and publish his research and you can see that it was in National Geographic. This particular article was the second best selling National Geographic article of all time. So second best for millions on millions of copies. And that just demonstrates to us that health and well-being is a priority for people. We do want to lead healthy, longer lives. He also published four books. The one that featured here, it was recently released earlier this year, and that is The Blue Zones of Happiness. And he also has TED Talks online on YouTube and has been featured on other public broadcast stations if you're interested in learning more. So in all of his publications, he summarized, again, the common factors studied among each, the re each of the regions which contributed to that population's longevity. And he termed this the power nine principles. And as we share, for instance, moving naturally as they did in Sardinia, Italy, having the right outlook, downshifting as our Seventh-day Adventists did as a family on the Sabbath, having a strong sense of purpose as Dr. Ellsworth did, eating wisely as in Okinawa and Sardinia too, having that plant-based diet, the 80% rule, harahachi bu, or wine at five if you're drinking one glass of a healthy wine, again, that supports antioxidants. And connecting, you'll notice, is the foundation of his power nine principles, which means it's the most important. Connecting, putting your loved ones first, having a strong sense of belonging, and a right tribe. So those are blue zones areas or regions. And that's why they have been termed the Blue Zones, because those factors contribute to their longevity. So what is the Blue Zones project? Well, research demonstrates that the average person spends approximately 90% of their time within a five-mile radius of where they live. So the Blue Zones project brings those best practices, or secrets of longevity, and we work with people, places, and policy so on the individual level, we offer or work with people to take personal pledges, making personal commitments to sustaining health for themselves, their families, and communities. We work with communities to create more moai or social groups, to have that personal interaction, to know each other, and to transform your community from perhaps maybe strangers or just neighbors to a community that you can consider ohana or family. We also offer purpose workshops and volunteer opportunities, again, to connect each other and to support the work being done. In terms of places, we work with stores, work sites, restaurants, schools, and faith-based organizations to implement health initiatives. And lastly, policies on the state level. And our three primary focuses are food, tobacco, and built environment policy, which I'll share more information about shortly. So to go ahead and test the power nine principles and the research done, Share Care and Health Ways originally launched a pilot project in Albert Lee, Minnesota, and that population consisted of approximately 18,000 people. So one of the first sectors that they wanted to work with was the built environment, which was a policy point I shared. In this picture, an Albert Lee community group met with Dan Burden, who is one of our Blue Zones Project built environment experts. One of the ideas that they had was to increase access to this beautiful lake within their community. And monies were originally allocated to widen Main Street, which you can see here. But the point of the Blue Zones project is to work with communities to make it more walkable or bike friendly. So instead, Dan suggested to reallocate those, fun those monies or the funding to 
create a bike path or a walking path that encompassed the entire lake and also provided walkable access to the nearby stores, schools, and other areas within their community. So you can see here, instead of widening the street, this was the walk and biking path built in here. And now they had pretty much year-round access to the lake and to other areas. And that increased natural movement within their communities. And I always like to point out this Kaikamahine girl in the front on the left. You notice it's cold, everybody's wearing jackets, but she's wearing slippers. So I was like, hey, she's from Hawaii. She might, or she might be Hawaiian, who knows? But she's walking there. But you can see that they're having fun and walking. So you can kind of think about your own communities too. Is it safe to walk? Is it safe to bike? And if it's not, if they do make it safe, are you more likely to walk and bike to other locations and increase your own natural movement throughout the day? And this is a picture of Dan Burden here in Hawaii. At this meeting, he met, he met with our built environment sector at Island Pacific Academy for Kapolei. And he's currently working with our Kapolei and Eva communities to review some of the areas that we would like to have changed by our state to make it more walk and bike friendly. And as we shared that we also work with places. So the man on the left, I kind of said he must work for Blue Zones because he's eyeing out the fries. He's mad, like don't eat those fries, it's not healthy. But the point in working with restaurants or grocery stores is to make the healthy choice the default or the easy option. So some of the suggestions or initiatives that we implement with working in restaurants, we kind of review their menu and review with them too. Maybe what are some healthier options that they already have and offer and how can we complement each other? So on the menu, perhaps make it visible that it's a sandwich with a salad. And then for someone asks, can we substitute for fries? Of course, they still have the option, but the easy or visible choice was the healthier one. And in grocery stores, this is an example of a Blue Zones checkout lane where they're removing the unhealthy defaults that you normally see upon checkout. So candy bars, sodas, for example, and replacing it with healthy options. That way you're not bombarded again with unhealthy choices. And this has been implemented in KTA and Foodland so far, and we're working with other grocery stores across our state. So you can see right here in KTA, they made their own Blue Zones project checkout line. And in this picture, we actually feature Dan Butner, the National Geographic Research Fellow that compiled all of this information for us and research. And he's working with a parent group in Albert Lee to start Walking Moai for elderly groups, parent groups, and then also walking buses that parents or their parent-teacher association groups would work together to provide for their children to have a safe route to school. And in this picture, you can see a elderly group from Albert Lee participating in our 10-week walking moai. And I wanted to show this picture of Parker Elementary on Hawaii Island, one of the first Blue Zones approved elementary schools and their school implemented a walking school bus in their area. And again, when we work with individuals or families, we wanna make the healthy choice the easy choice. So we also create and distribute checklists with information and suggestions or changes that you can make within your home. For instance, in this picture for the kitchen, you'll notice that on the table there's fruits instead of maybe the fast grab bars or candies. I don't know what you folks have. I used to have like a lot of lihimui things on my counter. But now we have fruit cups, kind of like the checkout lane, healthy options, and even a 10 inch plate compared to another size portion. So again, just making healthier defaults within your environment. So in Albert Lee, after only 10 months, um, Harvard studies showed that the results were simply stunning. And I'll go ahead and share with you why. After only 10 months of participating, they had a 20% decrease in absenteeism, and that was surveyed by large employer groups, so employers with employees of 100 or more. They had a collective weight loss of 7,280 pounds. And their health care costs decreased by 40%. That's huge, that's, only, that's almost half of your premium. So it decreased significantly. And because of the success for this pilot project in Albert Lee, they decided to go ahead and share this project with the rest of the United States doing their best to implement it as, in as many cities as possible. So the next group were termed the beach cities. We have Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, 
and Redondo Beach. Collectively, their population matches that of Kapolei and Eva, which is the community I currently serve in for the Blue Zones project. And you'll notice each of them have the word beach in them, and they were successful. So I thought, Hawaii, all we have is beaches. So we're going to be just as successful as all the beach cities. And here's some of their results. A 9% increase in healthy eating. And again, this is with a population of over 180,000 people. A 10% increase in exercise. A 30% decrease in smoking. A 14% decrease in obesity. And all of that success there actually garnered the attention of the governor of Iowa at that time. They actually had a well-being goal for their state to improve their statistics because they were categorized as the 16th healthiest state at that time. So you can see all the cities are highlighted that they implemented the Blue Zones project within. And here are their results. They had a decrease of 9% in smoking, 11% increase in healthy eating, a 7% increase in employees stating or affirming that they're now being able to utilize their strengths within their workplace. And they went from number 16 to number 10. Formerly, Hawaii was number one in terms of healthiest states, and now we're number two. So even more so, if you're number two or number one, there's always work to be done in terms of our collective health and well-being. And the Blue Zones Project truly embodies shaping or changing your environment to empower your health. So to date, we are in nine states across 42 communities, and we've impacted three million lives. As you can see, for the state of Hawaii specifically, you can't even see Oahu because we're blue zoned out. We're all over here. So on Oahu, we have Kapolei and Eva. We also have what's called the four M's, Manoa, Makiki, Makali, and Mo'ili'ili, as well as Ko'olau Poko, which includes Waimanalo all the way to Kahalu'u. And we're going to expand from there. And it's interesting because in order to become a Blue Zones Project City, or community, you actually need to apply. So this past application period, over thousands of cities applied across the United States, and Hawaii was recently selected. And because we were selected, HMSA, Hawaii Medical Services Association, decided to sponsor us here to provide our services across the state, even though we're only working in certain communities to date, we hope to grow and broaden that reach. So that's what we do with their communities and how we serve you. And now this is a kahe or a call to action and how you can participate and be active with the Blue Zones Project. I want to um, currently recognize my colleague here, Dante Tanner. He's one of our organizational leads for the Blue Zones Project Kapolei Eva Communities. And he's gonna kindly assist me in distributing the personal pledges to you folks. And as he does that, I'll go ahead and review what you're gonna go ahead and see on your paper. So first, to take action, you really want to learn and, of course, know the basis of anything that you're involved with. In addition to this presentation, we have the publications I shared. We do, we do have our Hawaii website, for instance, so you can learn more about us. And then we also want to measure a baseline of health. We are part of ShareCare, and a ShareCare is an application, a tech app, and they offer the Real Age Test, which is a free assessment online, on your phone, it's very accessible, that you can complete and it'll tell you what your true age is. So I'm actually 29 years old and I took my real age test and I was only 19 and a half. So being five years older than my husband, I felt really good. I'm like, I'm actually younger than you. My real age is younger than you. So I always try to tell him that. So I encourage you to see what your baseline of health is to take the real age share care test. And one of the benefits to that is the feed actually is populated and individualized or catered to your needs. So based on your responses, it'll share information that'll help you. So for instance, I, I suffered a shoulder in injury and said that affected my physical exercise or movement throughout the day. And it gave me articles about stretching or ways to heal that ailment. And because I'm an HMSA member as well, it actually connected to my health plan and providers that I could see to help me. So again, that's a measurement that we take. And then number three is to participate. So some of the information we shared that we're piloting here in Hawaii, we encourage you to join a Moai in your community. Again, by visiting our website or completing the bottom half of that sheet, we can go ahead and connect you with a Moai in your area. 
we encourage you to also attend any of our Blue Zones project activities, such as a purpose workshop where you're able to define or rediscover your purpose and learn how to live accordingly to it. Volunteer with us. We have a number of volunteer opportunities across the state or join our Blue Zones Action Force and serve on one of our committees, such as the built environment or for schools or any of those that met your interests earlier. And if you're looking at our pledge and you were hopefully inspired or engaged, my title is engagement lead, so if I didn't engage you, I'm not doing a good job. So hopefully I did. But when you look at that and you think of the checklist on the back and you identify with any of those areas, we encourage you to complete the bottom portion of the form and you can either turn it into myself or Dante or perhaps Valerie if you're interested and we would go ahead and connect you based on what interests you selected in your communities. So again, I ask you to take action and my personal investment with the Blue Zones Project is that as a mother, this is the first time in our history that we're expected to outlive our keiki. And of course, as a mom, I'm like, no ways, no how. I'm definitely wanna ensure that we're sustaining a healthy community in Hawaii for future generations. And in Hawaiian, the word kuleana has a dual meaning. It means that you have a privilege, but a privilege isn't an entitlement. It does come with responsibility. So as community members, as sisters, brothers, mom, dads, cousins, etc., we have a responsibility to each other and to future generations and this place that we are privileged to call home to sustain a healthier Hawaii. So I encourage you to join our movement and again mahalo nui for having me here today. Does anyone have questions? I must have been good, no questions, okay. Oh, we wanna take questions, yeah. Just, to, just wait. Um, I was expecting you to go a little longer. Sorry, I'm still telling, sending the links. So could you take us through this personal checklist a little bit? Um, sure. You did the fine, could you link it to the nine uh, areas? Because I feel like you did an overview, but what I love about the personal checklist is that it really helps us um, actively um, engage uh, items that we need for our own life. And we probably have uh, 160 online, so they don't have the checklist. I, I, we could have uploaded it, but could you read them for them and explain it in which area it comes from? Sure, so on that personal checklist, it'll be on the back portion with the bottom part that you could fill out you'll notice that there are a colored list of check items marked. And then next to it, there's an icon that kind of represents the purpose of that specific item. So for example, the first two has a shoe next to it. And some ideas or suggestions would be one, to keep a comfortable pair of walking shoes in sight or to adopt a dog. And I think the adopt a dog was because you need to take your dog walking, but adopt whatever you need. And some of the other options, removing TVs and computers from a kitchen and dining area. That's an example of downshifting because you're taking away items that either distract, distract you in an unhealthy manner, so to deal with stress in a more healthy manner, scheduling a weekly happy hour with friends. So the purpose of that is to really reinforce moving naturally, having a right outlook, eating wisely and connecting. So all of those options do connect to power nine principles but they're just suggestions. You are able to come up with some of your own. I think one of the most moving personal pledges I've seen was at Kapolei High School when we did a presentation. One of the students came up afterwards and shared, for my personal pledge, I wanted to focus on my mental well-being. So I made my own option. I shared, hey, that's my kai. So what did you decide to do? And she shared every morning she wanted to spend one minute looking in the mirror and just telling herself that she's beautiful. So again, this is not limited or defined to physical health. It does encompass mental and spiritual well-being. And we definitely want you to, to define that for yourselves. The purpose of the checklist, I think it's just, again, an affirmation kind of factor similar to Hala Hachigu, where there's some type of commitment made when you take the time to learn about it, when you take the time to participate. 
and then to share an outcome. So by doing the personal pledge, it's not information that we maintain or keep, but it's a commitment again that you're making for yourself. So I hope that answers your question. Things that's pretty cool about our personal pledge that you'll find. Uh, I'm sure some of you are going to go on the website or, or Google Blue Zones or something like that, and you'll find that um, in the 1970s they determined that uh, we've accumulated per day about 300 calories or so, about 350 calories throughout the days, which kind of attributes to our weight gain up until today. And on this checklist about 200 calories of moving you'll burn was added to the checklist and it's also taken away about 150 calories that we prefer that you alleviate consuming so if you actually utilize the checklist you will reduce your caloric intake by about 350 calories i thought that was pretty cool too yes definitely. well um we have a question online. Who handles Blue Zone Check on that? E. Oh, aloha kawaii. So <laughs> currently right now, there are no dedicated cities specifically to Kauai yet that have applied. However, we do have a statewide team. So our statewide leader at this point is actually Anne Hayashi and she resides on Kauai. So she would be a best person of contact. Afterwards, I'll make sure I include her information and I'll share it with Valerie for all of our, you know, po'e on Kauai that would like to participate. So mahalo for that question. So we have a lot of extra time. Is there some more stories you could share with us? Sure. I'll let Sandy ask her question. And anybody else? This is this is not a question, it's just a little story. Um, I personally don't like to drive. I have a car, I drive. We bring lunch, I walk, route. My, one of my co-workers told me, what? He cannot stand the parking lot in the Alamana Walmart. So he lives near there, and he decided to start walking there. And he said it was good because it gives him stress too. He doesn't think about parking. The only time he drives in there is if he has to buy parachute bulbs or bulbs. So, yeah, I go for walks on my lunch one to relieve myself from work, exercise, and to go get what I need to do. So it's just a little sorry. Oh, mahalo for sharing that. So she shared that she has a friend that walks, and even for her, she's experienced de-stressing, and it's helping her exercise. So thank you again. Hi, um, I wanted to know, how does a, a community become a blue zone? And is there an application deadline that comes about every year and how many people to actually get the process started in a community that's not designated already as a blue zone on the wall great question so hmsa is our sponsor here so they actually advertise periods in which they'll open applications if a city or community specifically wanted to participate in the blue zones project experience there is not a minimum number of people needed to motivate it, but I will say it is community-based. So the Blue Zones Project isn't an initiative that just goes into a community and says, X, Y, Z, you need this, this, and this. Absolutely not. It wants to hear the voices and concerns of the community. They want to know that there is investment and commitment there. And if so, the application process consists of a number of meetings that compiles a discovery report. We typically recommend pulling in people from the different sectors that we mentioned in our places. So policy, your local representatives for your district, for example, any of your city council members. We definitely recommend working with leaders in your community. So they don't necessarily need to be a CEO of a large business there, but people that are invested. This includes community groups, nonprofit organizations, people that reside in the community, equally important. So any residents at neighborhood board meetings, for example, that are interested, together they would go ahead and create a meet to complete that proposal, which would be submitted to HMSA, stating that they would like to be a Blue Zones Project community. So again, that's specifically if you would like Blue Zones Project to come into your community. We do work statewide. So in the instance, for example, a school not in one of the dedicated cities, wanted to become a Blue Zones Project approved school site, our state level team would work with them. And the reason every year it's only X amount of cities selected specifically, 
again, it's because we deal with that sponsorship from HMSA. So they're offering it in cohorts or groups, if you would like to call it that, for three-year periods. And that way they're able to offer and reach more people over a period of time. So we have three questions queued up. So you end, it takes a, every, it takes a little bit to get it back. Um, so it's similar to the woman that just asked the question, I live in Cayman Key, how would a community become a blue zone community? What is the criteria to become eligible? So this, this is what I was hoping your presentation would trigger, that people want this, HMSA is the leader, and um, so you have this team to work with it, but, uh, and you gave a specific name for Kauai. Can you drill down a little more, uh, like a Kaimo Key? Is there somebody they contact? Um, I know that you've had some changeover staff. I've been trying to get Blue Zones here for two years. So I, I don't want to miss the momentum you're building now. I'm a big believer in this movement, and it's the holistic movement that's very exciting, but what would you say for the Kaimo Key criteria? Kaimo Key, we want you. Every, we want you. Kauai, we want you. <laughs> that's what I would say to everybody in general. If they want specific criteria, that's actually really worked on the high-end level. So if their community is interested, it's very important to get your district representative or city council member on board with the Blue Zones project to create awareness. I would say a majority of them are. We actually have two policies going through on behalf of the Blue Zones project later this month. And Ledge just opened on Wednesday, as we know. So for Kaimo Key specifically, if that's something they want to think about within the next three years as a community, I would recommend perhaps inviting us to go ahead and speak to maybe your group or groups of people that are interested. That way, at least your community is knowledgeable first about the Blue Zones Project, and they can make an you know, educated-based decision on whether or not they want the Blue Zones Project there. And if so, are they ready to make that commitment and the work to be done? And we can go ahead and define the criteria and work with participating members on that committee to move forward. Great. And um, so my just clarification, and then yes, I would love for you to chime in too. It's so, but isn't the gatekeeper HMSA? Not necessarily a gatekeeper, they're just the sponsor. Okay. So when they come in, what they're really looking for in that discovery report, again, is just showing that there is community investment or buy-in. And then if so, HMSA goes ahead and if Blue Zones Project approves it, then they sponsor us to be there. So it's, it's definitely not a gatekeeper. This past session, there was actually supposed to be two communities and they opened it up to five because all five that they applied, they felt were definitely validated. Do you want to add something? Yeah, sure. So uh, by show of hands, who has access to the internet? Explain again. Oh, my name is Dante Tanner, and I am, um, if we're superheroes, she's Batman, and I'm Robin. Just to let oh, you he's know. he's Batman. Look so, at him. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for sure, Blue Zones Project wants to be everywhere. We're trying to do all sorts of amazing things in Hawaii. And if you have access to the internet, raise your hand. Most of you probably do at home and stuff like that. And we are online. So if you go to hawaiibluezones.com, that's basically our state level is sort of monitoring that, that station. And we're also on social media and, and uh, Kayola does an awesome job doing that. So before you leave here, pull out your smartphones and go ahead and like us on Facebook and uh, Instagram and all the cool stuff. And that's um, Facebook. So Blue Zones Project, Kapolei Eva. And even if you are in this environment, if you send us a question on there, we'll certainly get back with you and let you know who your point, points of contact are in your specific areas. But of course, we just started, what, in what, uh, October timeframe, and we are motivated and fired up. So we'll definitely answer your questions as best we can. But we have a, a uh, team out there that's just, uh, ready to, 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 um, to um, get you guys started on becoming Blue Zones, whether it's in your home, in your workplace, in your professions. So, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Um, and the website you just gave, bluezoneshawaii.com. Yes. Blue Zone to Hawaii is all one word. Blue Hawaii. Zones Project, right? Oh, so it's again. Hawaii, Hawaii. 
www.blueshawaii.bluezonesproject. Thank you. Dot so com. that at that website would be this personal checklist that the online group yes. didn't get. That's what I just sent you. Yeah. Okay. I just sent you the email. Okay. Sorry. I'm doing the mics and I don't have time for email. So here we are. Two more questions. We're doing great. And I hope the audience gets some more questions. Uh, just to follow the thread, the point of contact on windward side, because that's a very active side. I'm a Kailua gal. So where do they go for that? Yes. So actually, for the already selected communities, so Ko'ola Poko is included in that, I would recommend visiting the website because it has a link to our Blue Zones Project Ko'ola Poko team. Good. Again, so Waimanalo, Kailua, Kaneohe, Kahalu. Okay. And then uh, there was a question. Office Offices have a lot of snacks and sedentary workers. Any experience to improve these work areas? Yes, definitely. I actually, as you shared earlier, began with HMSA. And for a health insurance company, we, do, we did a lot of unhealthy things. But they've changed that because now they have adopted the Blue Zones Project. So I noticed a lot of people do sedentary work. So part of the Blue Zones Project is that we work with work sites. So we encourage work sites to become Blue Zones Project approved. It provides them... A menu, so to say, and we work with them to incorporate a number of health initiatives within their work site to support employee well-being. Some of those include creating walking moai, so dedicating 15 minutes out of an employee's time, and it's still allowing them pay time, for instance, to participate in a group that walks together. We incorporate or do workshops for them with cooking demonstrations, for example, to emphasize that plant-based diet. We also encourage potluck moais, so instead of unhealthy snacks at your office, to put healthy ones and to contribute healthier options to your potluck. So even if it is like, you know, a lot of people are doing chicken katsu plate lunch, well, how can you be healthier? We're not saying go vegan or vegetarian overnight, but we're just saying make a healthier choice. So maybe you're going to start soft. We're going to do half a race, half white, half brown, and then eventually go to brown or canola, for example. But we do work with work sites. Okay. Three more questions. Anybody in the audience has a question, they raise their hand, I will alternate. Uh, is there a support group to sustain lifestyle changes? So do you offer support group? So for the support groups, that's where we create your moai. So those social groups. So there are a variety of moai. Some of our moai that we've had on other islands, we have a lo'ikalo moai. They get together every time they hookie or harvest their kalo or taro. We have other areas that have surfing moais. They go surfing together. So we work with your community to connect you with like-minded people that enjoy the same activities that you do. So I would say that's a form of support. And I would say that it's sustainable because you're not relying on staff people. You're then again returning to your community and being connected with them. Oh, that's wonderful. So there are actually activity groups. They don't, it doesn't. It's not limited to the yeah, activity away. support yes. groups. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice way to handle that. Does your website provide resources for healthy cooking classes for a beginner and unhealthy food eater? Yes, that was me before October 2017. So our website does provide recipes. So we call them Blue Zones Project Recipes. All of our featured recipes take less than 30 minutes to prepare, and they are all plant-based. We also offer cooking demonstrations throughout the state. I know some communities are um, chiming in from abroad. If they visit bluezonesproject.com, you'll see whether or not Blue Zones Project is currently in your state. And in terms of healthy resources, I recommend you visit our website and sign up for our Blue Zones Project newsletter, or if you're here in person, by completing that, you would also receive a copy of our weekly newsletter that has healthy eating tips, guides, and some motivational pieces as well. Well, and you should explain what, what I loved about this uh, Blue Zone solution. So I, I went to uh, KC, no, WCC, Windward Community College, and Dan uh, Butner, Butner? Butner. Butner was there, and he presented, and then they were uh, offering these books. But the last uh, 50 pages of this book is full of recipes. So can you show it to the web camera? <laughs> because uh, this book is not hard to come by. They don't even really want to charge you. They want to get yeah. it in your hand. And so if you somehow uh, look on the website and get connected. So I went to a purpose, uh, purpose workshop. workshop. Can you explain the purpose workshop? 
certainly, uh, I just attended a purpose workshop two weeks ago and I'm attending one tomorrow, but the purpose workshop is awesome. Um, for people just trying to figure out what moves you, we define purpose as purpose equals your passion. You know, the things that move you, your values, things that you believe as well as your, let's see, passions, values, and what else, what else, what else? One more. I think more. it's really your personal yeah. strengths yeah. and your- And your gifts, that's yeah. it. So your pur purpose, strengths, and your gifts. And you go to these workshops, they're not very long, but you get an opportunity to go through the thought process to really get down to the nitty gritty on who you are and it, you know, and, um, figure out what your purpose is and it's helping for a lot of the uh, workplaces. I don't know if you, yes, you didn't mention it in a slide. It says the um, people are figuring out what their purpose is and they're actually doing a better job at work. And, and also with these uh, forms that you have, if you give those back to us, we're, we found that volunteers become healthier, happier, and they're living longer because even if you're doing your job to make the money that you need to make, you are afforded an opportunity to come home or on the weekend to do what you really enjoy doing, whether your purpose is to be uh, making kids more awesome. My purpose is I love coaching and kids. I love being around kids and developing them. That's what I like to do. And I'm a, a big time athlete. I like to show them cool things. But if you can figure out what you want to do and we have a, um, a method of you doing that, I think that's really good. So a purpose workshop is all about figuring who you are and people change. So if you're doing what you're doing now because that was your purpose, well, circumstances in life changes your purpose. And they, uh, and Dan Buettner figured out the two critical points in your life is when you're, uh, is when you're born and when you retire. When you're born because of death mortality, things got better because of you all, you know, the healthcare industry. And when you retire, you thought you were doing your purpose and then you stop, right? And that's scary. I just recently retired from the military. I, I put in 20 years and my purpose was to serve our country. And I was like, so who else I'm gonna serve, you know? <laughs> Physically, I'm talking about like people and things like that. And I figured it out. I figured it out through a workshop. So try it out. Yes. Okay, there's another question. Thank you, Santa. Um, can the Blue Zone Project be considered an evidence-based program? Yes, completely. I would say it's an evidence-based program because it's based on the research. For more uh, critical data points, those are provided on our resource links on our website. So it's completely evidence-based, and we actually continue to track and manage data within every city that we go through. So for example, the results that you saw in the beach cities and that pilot project for Albert Lee, and we're also maintaining those for Hawaii now. Okay, and can you go back to the power of nine um, slide? I have a question about that. Please? It's getting there, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of the, uh, the uh, evidence-based, well, we have over 600 evidence-based um, solutions that are able to nudge communities. That was it. That was it. The power of nine. Oh, the went, power of nine, yeah. You just went past it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so this is, all of this here is the evidence base. So uh, I would that, say evidence base would probably be the quantitative data that they're looking for, I would say the power nine principles are the common factors that he observed. Right, and the recommendations, yes. the results of the evidence-based yes. data uh, analysis. Yes. Correct, and the basis of our work within your communities to implement them to okay. shape your environment. Yes, so if you're new to this, let me make this linkage. So you, they have a very simple slide that speaks well for them, but they have it in abbreviated uh, language, like downshifting. We don't know what that really means. Uh, and I know you explained it, 
but then you passed out how you activated it. And if you see, there are symbols uh, on this mm -hmm. checklist that link to these power of nines. And I think you might have said that, but I'm just going to back up because I just, for the online people, I just sent the link oh. for the checklist. So you could pull up the checklist. So uh, could you just go through this again? Because these are the, as you said, the outcomes from all of that evidence-based work from those five communities and testing why, uh, and then these three big areas, the connection, eat wisely, and right outlook, um, and, and move naturally, the four big areas. So could we just do the link a little, just a little more, or can sure. you, can so you, you get a little you... more creative with this? Because this is a little bit in code if you're getting this for the first time. Having read the whole book and hearing, right. yeah, okay. So for the, that's a really great question. So for the paradigm principles, it's really broken down as such to simplify it. So when we go down through the checklist, if we were to go individually, for instance, again, the first two tie into moving naturally to exercising, the Attend the Blue Zones Project Purpose Workshop, removing computers, designating a space in your home for quiet time meditation or prayer, those touch upon your right outlook. So downshifting, de-stressing, or having the strong sense of purpose, and if not having it, defining that for yourself and to live accordingly to it. And then we go into the blue, the eating wisely. So everything highlighted in blue corresponds with eating wisely. All the items highlighted in green correspond with having the right outlook. The ones in orange correlate with moving naturally. Because I know you guys can read, right? You want to be in college here, if you couldn't read. So um, that's Remember, really... The online, mm -hmm. the 150 online right. do not have the sheet. So oh, the more you can tell us, oh, okay. the more you can tell us. We just have a fraction of the people in this training here. So online to essentially, I just want to explain that the Blue Zones personal checklist provides suggestions or options for you to implement or commit to either moving naturally more on a daily basis, ensuring that you have the right outlook, refining your diet to eat healthier or to eat wisely, and then options or suggestions to have you better connected with others and to connect yourself with people that positively support you. So the Blue Zones personal checklist that you may not have yet while you're online is essentially just a list of suggestions to empower you making a commitment to any of the par nine principles. So while, while we don't expect everyone to do all of them at any given time, if there's something of interest of you or something that you personally wanted to dedicate or take the time to work on, then we provide this personal pledge for you to make that commitment affirmation. Okay. You can hear me? Yeah. Uh, so the, I was sitting next to the gentleman and he mm -hmm. said, there are words you use, just even downshifting, and that can be translated to taking it easier, doing meditation, Definitely. having yeah. some quiet time. I'm just trying yes. to translate it. Is that what your question was? Yeah. You're, you, you're, so we're trying to translate it. I do have three more questions on, online here. Um, let's see. Do you have a checklist for workplace? So people are really interested for the workplace. Yes, so we do have different checklists, again, specifically for the household. And if a worksite is interested in participating, we do have a worksite pledge that your employer group or your worksite can take with options specifically catered to the worksite. Okay. Um, and they can find that online as well. So if they go to the menu, so the different pledges apply to uh, individuals, work sites. Uh, we have a, a different certification. So it's not just the work sites for the customers, but also for the employees. Perfect. So, th so the website is really critical. Here's a little more uh, technical, but we do have uh, very um, uh, involved health professionals. Are, the P are there PCPs, primary care providers, that are blue zone advocates as a medical home. Do you know what as, that means? As a medical home. I'm not familiar with medical home. I'm Medical familiar. home. So that uh, they want you to use Blue Zone 
uh, as your base um, for staying well. And uh, so, so there are many um, places that uh, you uh, identify your, your medical home and the community health centers. We have 14 qualified community health centers in the state oh. that use their health centers as their medical home. There are clinics, there are uh, many uh, providers, PCPs, that's their medical home. So I think they're asking a very sophisticated question here. I love the question because if you could become linked to medical homes or the doctors or advocates for Blue Zone and the nine and all of the checklist uh, components, we're really going to be proactive in health promotion, not, you know, waiting to be treated for Agreed. A so that would be preventative health care in a sense. And in terms of medical homes, I don't know off the top of my head specific PCPs that have adopted or utilized the Blue Zones project methodology to share preventative health and well-being practices. But I do know because HMSA is a sponsor and I formerly worked there, that they do have a great relationship with their providers and they do share this information with their providers and they're working with them or those interested to adopt different well-being practices. So you'll see a lot of them are a transformation in healthcare to the more preventative side. But if they're interested in specific PCPs for medical homes, I'll go ahead and notate that question. And if you wouldn't mind allowing me some time to research, to go ahead and consult with our HMSA liaison to see um, names or if anyone specifically comes to mind. I think that's a great idea and that's something I can commit myself, I'll take a pledge, to work with HMSA to share that people are interested in having medical homes that adopt the Blue Zones project. That's wonderful because if you start, there are a lot of HMSA uh, physicians or providers that take, there's a lot of PCPs that take HMSA. They're the and if they network. became a Blue Zone mm -hmm. advocate, uh, then and a, and then promoted the you know used the checklist and promoted this, which it would it would really integrate the whole the whole program in the state in my opinion and we're we're going way down that road now that that's a very exciting thing, and we know we're one of the healthiest and happiest uh, states in the nation so why not just keep going down the road of all this good stuff? Yes. Um, one more question and and then I'm going to come over and get. Okay, let me do the audience. Here I come. Hi. You mentioned that there is, uh, is HMSA sponsored some projects. So can you give us a specific example? How, how do they uh, like sponsor in the community's project? Yes, yeah, so they are literally our uh, capital funder to implement Blue Zones project. So when the Blue Zones project is implemented within a community, it does not cost the community or any organizations that would like to participate anything at all. All of the expenses, the workshops, the staffing, the collateral that comes with the work that we do is paid for or sponsored by HMSA. And the great thing about HMSA is that they brought it to all of Hawaii. So regardless of what type of medical insurance or plan that you have, they understand that to improve and sustain health, it needs to be done inclusively. So the Blue Zones project is offered to all members, but sponsored by HMSA. Okay, and then my buddy Jean uh, asks, us, asks another very good question, and I think you could elaborate a little more. Are the observations made by the person, by Dan, or who he worked with, and we know it's National Geographic, who wrote the book, the scientific data or his observations? What would tell how much evidence space is there in blue zones? So I think you're not quite, can you, can one address that more of how that research got done in the five worldwide communities, how the data was collected, how National Geographic went uh, and took all these pictures. That's why you have extraordinary pictures and documentation. Could you explain that a little more? Definitely. There's so much evidence-based research that supports it for the purposes of a presentation. Of course, we don't really delve into, into that portion yet, but the books or his publications don't only include his personal observations. He traveled with a team of experts. So these include cultural anthropologists, demographers, 
and within each community to, I would say that the experience is that it was a cultural immersion. So his highlights or his views within the publication, yes, they definitely demonstrate his observations, but the evidence was there because the study was done longitudinally over a 15 year period span, which is why we only elaborated on the first three because the uh, Nicoya and Ikoria, for example, were further researched later in these other publications. But the purpose of the experts or the team that he travels with is to compare his observations and findings to the actual health population data. So what is the general age for the population? How many or what's the percentage that suffers from chronic diseases? If so, what chronic diseases are there? And so forth. Okay, and there was a comment. Yes, this is a project that HMSA can pursue. So do, do you know where they're gonna go future-wise? How will they expand uh, statewide? I know they're a statewide uh, program. Yes, so in terms of expanding or broadening the Blue Zones Project Reach, again, if it's for specific communities that would like to do this together, then that would be the application process. So the next application pro process will most likely be open or begin in 2020 because we just previously closed and in terms of opening, they just want to know that there is investment from the community and this is a health initiative that they definitely want to support and bring in. So it's um, expanding. I think their reach is to really touch every community and they see that there's strength in shaping your environment. So I don't see it as a limit, but the expansion would be in cohort groups. Okay, any other questions in the auditorium? Any more questions online? So um, again, is there any upcoming presentations or anything we should be aware of if people want to learn more or uh, they'll go to the website to make a connection for their own particular community? Any, any uh, final words for us? If you are in Kapolei, we're having our purpose workshop tomorrow from 1030 to 12. But in terms of future events, I definitely recommend the website because it has all of our information. So one, you're able to take your personal pledge on the website. You're able to find out more information about all the different sectors we work in. And if you're interested as a community to become involved, we also have the online forum on the website our resources, and a list of all upcoming events across the state that you're able to participate in. But my last words is, I hope that we inspire you to work together as a community, to really think and be conscious about your environment, and not only how you want to be influenced, how do you want your community or others to support your well-being, but how are you gonna influence others? What's the change that you wanna impact or make? And to go ahead and move forward with it. So mahalo nui. Thank you. Let's give it. Oh, I need water now. <laughs>